X-Play, the center of the gaming universe. Today on X-Play, we've got an exclusive hands-on with the club, a frantic arcade shooter from the creators of Project Gotham Racing. Plus, we go on location with creator Mizuguchi to get the latest on Res HD and find out what new challenges are in store. And in today's cheat, Kristen Holt helps you attain perfection in Assassin's Creed and get every last achievement. Watch your back, it's game time. Welcome to X-Play, TV's most watched video game show. I'm Adam Sessler. And I'm Morgan Webb. We're coming to you from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles on Wednesday, January 30th. On today's show, if you like the idea of Project Gotham Racing with guns, then you'll probably want to see our exclusive hands-on demo of The Club. Then if you're a slut for achievement points, we'll show you what sports games to play and which ones to avoid when X-Play takes a closer look at achievement horse. Plus, we go on location with Mizuguchi to talk about the new and improved high-def version of Rez and why you might want to play with three controllers. And in today's Cheat, Kristen Holt will show you how to pull off the real challenge in Assassin's Creed, finding all those freaking flags. But first, let's go over to Adam, who has all of the day's top stories in our gaming update. Thank you, Morgan. Well, Tecmo, the Japanese developer of the Fatal Frame series, has announced that a Wii version of the game is currently in development. Despite its mature subject matter, Nintendo is publishing the title and intends to actively promote the game's release. Even more interesting is the announcement that Suda51, X-Play's current love child and creator of No More Heroes, will be involved with the project, working as one of the game's directors. Valve recently announced that a publishing and game development tool set called Steamworks is available as a free download via Steam. This software provides publishers and developers tools that enable voice chat, auto updating, and stat tracking. Also included is the multiplayer backend and matchmaking services that were created to support games like Counter-Strike and Team Fortress 2. Best of all, Steamworks provides a state-of-the-art encryption system that will prevent people from pirating a game before it's released. Now, Crytek, the German-based developer of Crisis, is planning to give console demonstrations of their CryEngine 2 middleware at this year's Game Developers Conference. This will be Crytek's first public demonstration of their technology on a platform other than the PC. So it's no surprise that this news adds fuel to the rumor that Crisis will be ported to the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. Crytek also plans to demo the CryEngine 2 on a $600 PC to help prove that their technology can be an affordable and reasonable option for developers, as well as gamers who can't afford a Blackbird, me included. Ubisoft has released new downloadable content for the Xbox 360 version of Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter 2. Dubbed the Co-op Collection, the pack includes a total of nine maps and five new co-op missions, continuing the story and giving players a chance to quell the enemy uprising in South America and hunt down their rebel leaders. The download costs 800 Microsoft points and is available for download right now. Be sure to visit our website for a full look at this brand new co-op collection trailer. Point your browser to g4tv.com slash xplay, where you'll also continue to get all of today's up-to-the-minute video game news. But now, let's go over to Morgan, who's ready to help increase your pitiful Xbox Live Gamer store. Thanks, Adam. Now, if achievements tip the scale when you're buying a multi-platform title, then you should probably listen up. Sometimes it's hard to tell what sports games will give up a thousand points easy and which ones will fight you tooth and nail. Our crack team has compiled a report to help X-Play investigate achievement whores. This week, in honor of that big football matchup that's coming, you know, that super game that takes place in a bowl-shaped stadium, we present a super special X-Play Investigates Achievement Whores Sports Edition. Here are the best and worst sports games guaranteed to score you some gamer points. Madden 08 is so easy, you don't even have to play the game to get most of the thousand points available. Step 1. Select Play Now and pick a good team for yourself. Set the difficulty to Rookie. Step 2. After the kickoff hit start, and select Super Sim. Step three, sit back and let the gamer points roll in. Next up, we have Fight Night Round 3. All you have to do for 1,000 easy points is win each of the sponsored fights. 
after winning the ESPN pay-per-view fight, the Burger King Invitational, and the Under Armour fight, you won't just be a consumer whore, you'll be an achievement whore. But for every pushover game against the Miami Dolphins, you have to play against the unstoppable Hellspawn juggernaut that is the New England Patriots. Or say NHL 08. Sure, some of us like hockey. But wait till you see what EA expects you to do. How about trying to score as the goalie in superstar mode? Who the hell thought that shooting the puck through the line of burly French Canadian defenders from somewhere behind the red line would be easy? Goalie's out, he'll get the extra player on the ice. Another way to net 25 frustrating points is trying to beat an NHL team with an AHL team on Superstar. In the end, all those gamer points don't get you anything. But you're an achievement whore, and that's worth far more than any material reward for you. Me, I take the material reward any day. Now there's a total of 5,000 points available in today's X list of top selling Xbox 360 games. Whether you'll get them, well, that's another story. Coming in at number five is Lost Odyssey, which is available for pre-order. The game contains four discs. Apparently, Mist Walker thought they had cut things short in Blue Dragon. Coming in at number four is Guitar Hero 3, and it's really hard to act surprised that it's selling well. At number three is Devil May Cry 4, which proves that angry fanboy petitions really don't mean much. Just ahead of that is another forequel, Call of Duty 4. It's the new home of trash talking on Xbox Live. And at number one is Burnout Paradise. Don't let the demo and the changes scare you away. The game is great with friends, and be sure to hook up your vision camera for extra fun. All right, stay right there. X-Play will be back with flags, headshots, and hypnotic music right after this break. Coming up on X-Play, we join the club and go hands-on for an exclusive look at how to become the fastest killer around. Then, get ready to free run. We show you how to find all of Assassin's Creed secrets. And we go on location to talk with Mizuguchi, the mastermind behind Res HD. Stay tuned. Welcome back to X-Play. In order to be a successful assassin, there are a few things you'll absolutely need. Things like knives, cat-like reflexes, and flags. Yes, flags. Confused? Christian Holt is here to explain. Thanks, Adam. In Assassin's Creed, killing your targets doesn't pose too difficult of a challenge. Finding flags is a whole nother story. To get you started on the right foot, here's how you track down the first in today's cheat. If you enjoyed Where's Waldo, then you'll love hidden flags in Assassin's Creed. There's over 300 of these suckers to find on your Xbox 360, and each set unlocks valuable achievement points to boost your gamer score. In the first area of the game, Masyaf, there are 20 flags to collect. Some are more difficult to find than others, but don't sweat it guys, I know where to find those really tough ones. After you're stripped of your rank and special weapons, you'll be able to collect the Assassin flags. Most of the flags can be found scattered throughout the village in more obvious locations, on rooftops, around corners, and behind buildings. But some of the harder flags to uncover are right under your nose. At the Assassin's base, you'll find several flags around the castle. There's one inside the main hall in the back by the bookcases, as well as one in the nearby courtyard out front. Once you grab this one outside the main gates, take the ladder to your right. Here you'll find another flag by the window. Pick it up and head over to the wooden planks. Jump off into the pile of hay and go across the first balance beam. Check by the ledge and get yourself another flag. After climbing the wall to get back to the castle, you'll discover another flag tucked away after jumping down by the edge of this rock. Now you'll be ready to head down to the village and collect the rest of your remaining flags. If you find yourself stuck on 18 out of 20 flags, don't worry, you're on the right track. The last two flags can only be obtained after assassinating your first target, Tamir. Head to Damascus and speak with the Assassin Bureau leader and then find Tamir. Once you eliminate the target, you'll end up back at the castle in Masyaf. But this time, a new gate has opened up inside that allows you to roam the courtyard out back. Here you'll find the two remaining flags. One is on a column in the middle of a little pool with the final flag hiding in the corner just a few steps away. Now if I could only find where I put my car keys. For even more tips and tricks, head on over to g4tv.com slash cheat. Let's go back over to Morgan. Thanks, Kristen. Now next play comes back, we've got an exclusive hands-on with the club. And 
I'm not talking about auto theft prevention devices. Then we check out Res HD and sit down with this designer. But first, let's check out who packs the most punch when it comes to puzzles on today's leaderboard for Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix. Do you think Salt Snake will die in the fourth Metal Gear Solid? And if not, do you think they'll continue on with the series? Welcome back to X Play, and thank you for your question, Neo Snake. I th I think Snake's already dead. Yeah, exactly. He's, I mean, he he's, might he's you know he's animated with nano machines. Exactly. I probably cannot be right. <laughs> even, I think the thing is, he could very well die in this. Remember, this yeah. is Metal Gear Solid that could put a, a vampire in, 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 you know, Sons of Liberty. So pretty much he could die and just resurrect for another game. Of course, they say this might be the last game, though. Yeah, but they always love to tease that. Exactly. This could be the last. This is your last chance to buy this. You better buy two copies. Yeah, I think three was at one point going to be the last game as well. So it's not. I, I wouldn't worry too much there, buddy. <laughs> if you ever have any questions for us, please don't be shy. We want to hear all your thoughts, concerns, and interrogative statements. Use the test knowledge. Just log on to g4tv.com slash xplay and send us your video viewer mails. You supply the questions. We supply something like an answer. We don't guarantee quality. No. We just guarantee existence. Now, if there's one thing I love on cold winter evenings like this, it's blood sports. You know the sound of my 45 F going off the vacant warehouse walls, the satisfying crack of my opponent's bones, and tea. I also like tea a lot. But if you enjoy brutal pastimes like myself, you might want to join the club. Sega is here to go hands-on with their new point-based first-person shooter. Bizarre Creations are known for their popular Project Gotham racing series. The latest title, The Club, centers on a group of eight criminals who are paid a great amount of money to participate in bloody gunfights. In this club, it's either you get rich or die trying. While the shooter may sound like a departure for Bizarre, its score-based arcade-like gameplay is something they know how to do very well. Joining us today from Sega, Ken Ogasawara. Thank you so much for stopping by. And of course, you've brought us the club. How is this different from other shooters? Well, I mean, mm, what we're trying to do with this game is to make it into a real arcade experience. So, I mean, we want you to be running through a course real quickly, killing as many people as you can and doing it stylishly. So, how are you accomplishing that? Well, I mean, some of the things that we want to throw in there is that you've got a timer that's counting down, you've got a multiplier that's counting down. Every time you get a kill, you get addition to the multiplier. So you need to get to another kill before that multiplier goes down. So it's really bad, basically, if you are running out of people to kill. Oh yeah, very much so. I mean, if you sit there and stop and hide, you're not going to get any points in the game. So there is no possibility of stealth action. In this this is not meant to be stealth at all. It is run and gun all the way through. So every time you kill somebody, your multiplier is basically maintained. Maintain, yes, or keeps on going up. Okay. So what happens when your multiplier when your multiplier uh, goes down? Well, I mean, we call that a bleed out, and you're, it starts bleeding out real quickly to the point where I mean, you get dropped down, the multiplier drops down all the way down to one again. Um, are you afraid that there's going to be any kind of backlash from <laughs> news outlets about killing people for points? Backlash on this? I mean, mm, <laughs> this is an arcade game, this is a video game, I mean, mm, not worried at all. I mean, this is meant to be entertaining. It's so out there, it's so fantasy that, I mean, if people took this with any sort of reality, it'd be odd. <laughs> Sometimes people do odd things, but this is, <laughs> it always and never ceases to amaze me. Um, this is a kind of a different kind of game for uh, Bizarre, Project Gotham Racing, Geometry Wars. Um, how did this game really come about? Well, it is, yes, you've got, um, Bizarre has a racing pedigree, but they wanted to bring that experience to the FPS. They also wanted to have lots of shooting and explosions. So, in some of the way, it is an evolution from the racing game into the shooting genre, and they brought their spin to it. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about multiplayer. Um, how, what kind of modes are we going to see? Well, you're going to have some of your standard modes, free-for-alls and the t um, death matches and whatnot, but the other thing that we wanted to do in this with the multiplayer, with the score attack, when you're doing one on, or one against eight other players, okay. you're going to be trying to still do your stylish kills so that your multiplier goes up. 
Another mode that we have is Hunted Hunted, where again the idea is one person is, we're playing reverse tag, one person, as soon as you get a kill you become the hunted and now you're the rabbit and you have to run while everybody else is trying to run you down. And what kind of things can you do to make your kill more stylish? Some of the things that you can do, I mean, well, headshots are the easy one, but... Headshots are always stylish. <laughs> but, mm, we want you to sit there and do rolls and then pop up and snap, do snapshots. We want you to do, do rick, uh, ricochets off walls to get kills. I mean, so there's a whole bunch that we have in there to do. And how many uh, players are we going to see online? Um, up to eight people. Wow, that'll be a good time. <laughs> um, so what are some of the differences between the versions going to be? That fit in on the different consoles? Um, actually, just like on all the consoles, it's going to be the same game. It's just like we wanted to make sure that the experience, whether you're playing on the PlayStation 3, the Xbox 360, or okay. the PC, that it's all the same. Awesome. We can't wait. Thanks for coming by. The club is set for release on February 19th. X-Play will be back with more right after this. Up next on X-Play, we go on location with creator Mizuguchi to talk about Res HD, as well as review the long-awaited game. It all goes down in just a minute. X-Play presents GDC 08. Come along as Adam and Morgan uncover the very latest in gaming. X-Play from the GDC starts February 18th, only on G4. Welcome back to X Play. Back in 2002, the musical rail shooter Rez had a small cult following on the PS2 and the Dreamcast. Well, now it's back, looking to make a comeback. And this time it's an HD and 5.1. We're taking a look at it in today's download. Those flashing lights, that pulsating music, that like totally zen feeling that you're one with all your senses, man. Put down your glow stick, you magnificent ravers, it's not 1993. And I'm not reviewing an old Moby album. This is Res HD. Res originally came out in 2002 for the PS2 to um, <clears throat> rave reviews. It's back now for the Xbox Live Arcade. The game is exactly the same as it was when you first fell into a Res trance six years ago. You play a futuristic hacker tasked with breaking into a futuristic computer program and preventing it from shutting down. In the future. Along the way, feel free to blow up any firewalls or viruses you encounter on the way in. Take that, McAfee! Sayonara, I love you virus! Hasta la vista, bugbear! Res is famous for its use of synesthesia, or a simulation of multiple senses through one. All of the action and effects are set to trance music that becomes more intricate as you delve deeper into the program, so your character and enemies bump into the ever-increasing complexity of the beats. It'll set you back 800 points or 10 bucks, but that's a small price to pay for what you're getting. An immersive game, a thumping album of club music that you sort of control, a laser light show to rival anything at the planetarium, and all in glorious widescreen high def with surround sound. It's cheaper than a trip to Burning Man. If you are wondering what it took to get a unique game like this to see the light of day, then check out this on-location interview with the designer of Rez, Tatsuya Mizuguchi. Rez, one floating humanoid figure's musical vibrating journey into a virus-corrupted CPU. Is it as weird as it sounds? Yes, quite frankly. Is it also awesome? Yes, now even more so as the world of Rez goes HD. Rez creator and game design visionary Tetsuya Mizuguchi fills us in on the strange and amazing world of Rez HD. So the Rez is kind of a the new experience you know, using the visual and sound, even the vibration. The kind of a sensorama experience. I watch high def, the visual, the power of you know involvement of you know the human senses is getting you know higher and higher. You know from eyes, ears, and whole senses. With sight, sound, and touch represented. There's only one more sense to satisfy, your sense of achievement. The, my favorite is uh, uh, resident. You have to clear 
uh, five all levels by 100% complete and you have to get uh, all items and uh, you can get the uh, secret character. I think it's really difficult to, you know, clear everything. Yeah, I think the, uh, it must be addictive, you know, for the people who love the, the res. Yeah, anyways, it'll be fun. Well, we're done for the day, but we'll be back tomorrow with an all-new X-Play for you at 8 p.m. And on our next show, we preview the Dino Field Turok, and we have a review of the new diving sim for the Wii Endless Ocean. Yes, you heard me right. Diving sim. Also, we go on location to a next-gen game store that seems like heaven. And we have a preview of Alone in the Dark. Now, I'm hoping this chapter finds you in more darkness and even a loner -er. I'm pretty sure that's not a word, a loner -er. Coming up. But be sure to join us in February when we head up to San Francisco to bring you five days of on-site coverage from the Game Developers Conference. X-Play will be there to get you every detail on the latest innovations at gaming's first big event of the year. We'll have exclusive interviews, breaking news, and all the highlights of the keynotes. It's only a few weeks away, so if you want the inside track on GDC, tune in to X-Play starting February 18th only on G4. You don't want to miss it, and we will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.